The next feature I'd like to go over is Live Action's capabilities for PFR. So let me just go ahead and um, present that for you. And what we're really helping our customers with is being able to visualize performance routing. Now, a lot of our customers really like performance routing because it's application routing. They don't have to wait for more of a catastrophic event where maybe a link goes down and then wait for OSPF or BGP or EIGRP to reconverge. But by really looking at the performance of the application, it's able to make intelligent decisions. So in this particular instance, we're primarily protecting voice traffic. Now, this device, this 2921, is an MCBR pair, and it's located out in San Francisco. It has two WAN links, one going off to an AT&T service provider, and then the other going off to Verizon. Now, let me just scroll out. So I have some annotations on this topology, and there's, there's a Verizon service provider. It's, all that traffic is going off to a remote branch, and that's represented by this 2921 router. Now, this voice flow is traversing the network, but what happens if there's a brownout scenario? Uh, perhaps there's some packet loss, but very minimal packet loss. Maybe there's excess delay. We're going to induce this delay and packet loss using a link trippy. So there's a brownout scenario that could be occurring farther down in the service provider core. Now let's go ahead and induce that brownout. So I'm just going to turn on that WAN emulation. Now by going back to live action and double clicking on this 2921, let's look at PFR records that are coming in and out of this system. Now what we're waiting for is after that impairment was put in place, PFR is going to be able to show you that there is an auto policy event for your critical voice applications. Now, live action is just waiting for that record to come in, and there it is. PFR from this 2921 router sent records to live action to say that there was an unreachable criteria, there was packet loss that was occurring, and then it was able to then reconverge the network around that brownout scenario uh, to be able to protect that critical voice application. Now, by we see that there was a threshold crossing alert within the table view, but by double-clicking on alerts, we're then able to look for that PFR alert that just came in, and there it is. There was an unreachable event um, that occurred within PFR. But by looking at the historical search, you're able to then key in on that specific PFR alert. Click on Execute, and there it is. We can then open a report with regards to PFR auto policy. So we're noticing that at this particular time, around 4 o'clock in the afternoon, there was that unreachable event. Now that was because there was some brownout scenarios and there was some packet loss going out further down within the service provider core. Now, PFR reconverged, and we can verify that by going back to the system topology. Now, it was originally going over that northern path to AT&T, but by refreshing the flows within live action, we're able to see that PFR reconverged and that that application, that voice traffic, was protected. So that flow is now going over that southern path over Verizon. By refreshing again, we're going to just see that uh, flow is timing out over the northern path, and then all that flow is going over that southern path, and there you see it there. So by using live action, you really get situational awareness with PFR. We're able to show you about alerts that came in because of auto policy events, and then using live action's rich visualization, you're able to confirm that the path is taking a secondary path, and that critical voice application is being protected.